This is the first of a uh, series of short tutorials where we're going to be looking at Nuke's channel management system. Now Nuke has a very sophisticated layers and channel system which effectively means that you can have up to 1024 channels of data within a single script. Now this can be confusing to new Nuke users so we'll need to take a closer look at this. Now the channels can be grouped into layers. Now this is just like f the layers in Photoshop. You can have a lot of different layers in Photoshop with each having its own channels and Newt uses the same basic principle. Now the whole purpose of this channel structure is to allow access from any channel to anywhere in the script without having to run a connection to it and the result of this is a much cleaner compositing script. So you can see that I've got a script open here, it's a, it's a new script and I've just popped in a, um, an, an image. I've got a couple of nodes here which I'm going to uh, refer to later on to demonstrate. But at the moment my view is just connected up to the raw image. And this is a JPEG. So let's just take a look at the, the channels, uh, sorry, the layers drop down on the viewer. And if we take a look at this, you can see that essentially these are the layers and we've got really two predefined layers being, being shown. We've got the RGBA and we've got the RGB and you can see that the RGB is the one that's been selected. And This is because the read node always populates the data into the RGBA channel. So this layers view is the, is the place where all the layers and channels are defined in Nuke. If we just take a look at this other layers fly out you can see that there's a whole bunch of other layers in here. Now these are also, they're commonly used and they're predefined layers. Nuke has, has predefined these because they are used regularly. But at the moment they're sitting dormant in this other layers and the reason why is because they currently haven't been populated with any data. So they just sit there waiting to be populated. As soon as they're populated they'll jump over onto the left side and they'll, and they'll add to this list. So we're going to take a look at this basic, the basic concept here. So you can see here that my viewer is set to the read node. And we can see that the layer that's been selected is the RGBA layer. So on the other side of this is another drop down, which is the channels drop down. So if we click on this and we come down, we can see that the, currently we're looking at the, a combination of the red, green and blue channels of this layer. And again, this is the default position that Nuke takes. So let's start by just taking a look at the red channel. Now you can see that the, the red channel is basically just grayscale. It's just a grayscale values from the brightest, the whites, to the darkest, the darks in the sky and under this mud garden, in this recesses of this wheel, etc. Now what does this mean to us in terms of the red channel? What it actually means is that areas that are shown as brightest contain the most red data. So areas around this light, around this number plate, around the canopy, some of these reflective areas on the chrome, these are the areas where there is more red in the image. Whereas the areas that are displaying as the darkest contain little or no red. And similarly, if we go to the green channel, then we get a, a slight difference in the, in the configuration of this image. Uh, again, we'd, we, we know that this area contains greater amount of green values, as does the number plate as does some of these reflective areas but again recesses around this wheel, the sky, some of these dark areas in these, uh, in these door areas are, uh, are contain little or no green. And the same goes for the blue channel. Again you'll see a difference in the, uh, in the configuration of the grayscale image and again we see greater contrast here between the light and the, and the buildings that are adjacent. But Again there's more blue values in this and little or no blue values certainly no blue values in this kind of area and in these recesses and some but, but significantly less blue values in these areas that have been shown as grey. So if we just set this back to RGB. So I guess the question is we've just seen the three, the three components of this image the red, the green and the blue, all of them grayscale images. So how on earth does the, does the software uh, show these three grayscale channels as color. Well, this is why I've constructed this little uh, this this little composite, and I'm just going to disconnect there for a second, and we're just going to take a look at the red channel. Now, what I've done here, if we just take a look, this is a simple shuffle node, and what I've done is I've I've blanked out everything apart from the red channel. So I've, I'm so all we're seeing is the red channel data, but we're seeing it in the eyes of the viewer 
as, and the RGB, which is why we're actually seeing it as red rather than grayscale. And this kind of depicts what we mean. We can see that there's a hell of a lot of red values in this kind of area, and in these bright things, in these reflections, in these canopies. But again, in the door frames, in the recesses of the wheel, under the mud guard, in these shadowy areas, there's little or no red values. And similarly, if we look at the green channel, we see the same kind of picture. Again, a lot of green in the bright areas, little or no green in the dark areas. But what if we take a look here? Now what's happening here is that we're merging the red and the green together. and We start to see something a little bit interesting. We start to see the, uh, the, the beginnings of a formation of a color image. And that's because what's happening is that the, is that the software is actually, is actually merging the color channel. So even though these were depicted as, as grayscale channels in the RGB, when we looked at those as individual channels, when we actually look at those within the context of the RGB channel set, we can actually see now that the green and the red channels coming together actually give us some color. And again, if we come down to this one, where we're actually merging the red and green there with the blue channel, which is coming in at this side, we now see the image as it looked originally. And just to demonstrate that, if I just connect a pipe to the, uh, to the uh, original RGB and then just toddle between the two, you can actually see, if you look at the image, there's absolutely no difference between the two. So effectively what this is, is a combination of the red and green channels and then merged with the blue channel. So this is effectively the red, green and blue channel. So I'll just put that back. So I think it's worth saying that in terms of the, the layer system, the RGB layer, uh, uh, sorry, the RGBA layer and the RGB channel set, this is about as simple as it gets. So in a later tutorial what we'll do is we'll actually look at how we can actually put this to some use and actually help us in the compositing process.